It's 6 a.m. You turn the tap on and nothing, not a drip. You check the pump and it's dead. The tank is empty. And now you're buying water from the store, assuming you can get there and they haven't been wiped out. I've seen it happen. And most of the time, it comes back to a small number of preventable mistakes. Today, I'm walking you through the 10 most common ways that people sabotage their own off-grid water systems. They're easy to miss until the day that you run dry. And number 10 on my list is the sneakiest one. If you're serious about keeping your family alive, this video might just help you do that. The Ready Life, into the country. Hey, I'm Nick and welcome to The Ready Life. We've lived off-grid for 25 years and helped thousands of folks gain independence from the systems that control their water, food, heat, and power. And today, I wanna to help you avoid some serious mistakes that can ruin your water system and make your family really vulnerable. And number one is no water storage for a slow well. A slow producing well may very well be able to support your household if you have a cistern or a storage tank. Without one, you're depending on real-time flow and chances are your pump is gonna be pumping faster than the water that's being replaced, which means it's gonna pump it dry. A spring or well that produces one gallon per minute gives you almost 1,500 gallons a day, but only if you collect it. Without storage, you risk running dry when you need it most, when you've got a bunch of irrigation going. So think of a cistern as your off-grid savings account. It enables that dribble of water to pile up while you sleep so that during the day you have a sizable stash to pull from. Mistake number two, is an undersized cistern. Installing storage is one thing, sizing it properly is another. Hear that noise? That is the spring flowing into the cistern. And because this is daytime, we've been using water, the water level in the cistern is down. And so you can hear the water pouring in from the spring. Once this tank fills up, it flows out the overflow and off she goes. I recommend at least two to three times your average daily water usage in cistern capacity. That gives you a solid buffer, especially if your source is inconsistent. For example, many homes use 50 gallons per person per day for inside use. So a family of four might use 200 gallons a day for household use, and let's say another 200 for irrigation, so 400 gallons a day. That means it'd be wise to have at least 800 to 1200 gallons in storage. But ideally, I'd love to see you have much more, even a week of water. Now, a week of water is gonna be hard to achieve if you do a ton of irrigation, because that would be a boatload of water, but just do the best you can. Mistake number three is choosing a water pump that's too big. There's a lot of water pumps out there, and a lot of folks overbuild here, thinking that bigger equals better. But off-grid, a high horsepower pump is often overkill. Bigger pumps have major startup surges that can overwhelm smaller solar systems or generator systems. And you don't wanna trip your inverter just trying to get a glass of water. Instead, go with a soft start pump. These ramp up slowly, minimizing surge while still delivering the volume and pressure that you need. It's a smarter match for off-grid systems, especially if you're relying on solar. And that leads us to number four, water pump that's too small. On the flip side, undersizing a pump to save power can cost you more in the long run. If it has to run constantly to do its job, your energy usage can actually increase. We've used a one-third horsepower pump pulling around 850 watts, and it had to run like 12, 13 minutes, something like that, to fill our pressure tank. Swapping to a soft start three-quarter horse or one horse pump pulling almost 1,500 watts could get the job done in under three minutes, and then we'd use less than half the total power with the pump. So bigger isn't always worse. You're looking for the most efficient option. Mistake number five is not having backup power for your pump. And this one hits hard. You've got your system built, everything works until the power goes out, and so does your water pump. Now you've got no power and no water. At a minimum, you need a generator backup. Better yet, I recommend a solar-powered battery backup system so you have reliable power for extended times. Of course, the gold standard would be a gravity flow spring, but those are really rare depending on your layout. But you can take a look at seven real homesteads and see how they've solved these kind of challenges, how they built in reliable systems to make sure their family doesn't run out of water. You'll get to do exactly that in the Exodus series, a free one-week online journey where you'll tour working off-grid homes and see not just their water setups, but also their power systems, food production, heating solutions, and more. Just head over to thereadylife.com forward slash Exodus to get access for free. Now let's talk about mistake number six. Mistake number six is ignoring gravity when it's available. If your land gives you elevation, then use it. 
Pumping water uphill to a buried cistern and letting it gravity feed back down is one of the most energy efficient things that you can do with a water system. To achieve normal house pressure, you're going to want at least 60 feet of elevation gain, but even 30 feet can be livable if you're willing to accept lower pressure. Once water is up the hill, gravity never quits. It doesn't freeze, it doesn't short out, it just plain works. Number seven is no hand pump on the well. Even if you have a backup power system, every well should have a non-electric backup. And yes, that means a hand pump. Most people think their well is too deep, but modern hand pumps can handle static water levels of 300 feet or more. And that means even deep wells are often good candidates. A hand pump gives you peace of mind, it's low tech, it's reliable, and there when everything else fails. If your system ever truly goes down, you'll thank yourself. Mistake number eight is leaving pipes or cisterns exposed. Whether it's freezing or damage from UV rays, burying your water lines in cisterns is a no-brainer. In cold climates, unburied pipes can freeze solid, and thawing them out mid-winter is absolutely miserable. But even in warmer zones, exposure leads to UV damage, leaks, or even trouble with growth. So bury your pipes below your region's frost line, insulate anything that's shallow, please trust me. Digging frozen dirt with a pickaxe in January is an experience you don't want. <laughs> Mistake number nine is skipping a proper lab test. Looks clean is not a water quality test. Every water source, well or spring, should have a lab test. You're looking for bacteria, also minerals, nitrates, or even arsenic. What you find will determine whether you need special filters. Knowing what's in your water is the only way to manage it confidently. And finally, number 10. The wrong pipe size or misunderstanding pump sizing. This one is a silent killer of system performance. First, pipe size. Some folks run three quarter inch line from the pump to the house, which can cause lots of friction losses. If your pipe run is over 100 feet or you use a decent volume, then go with one inch or even inch and a quarter. Some folks base their pump size on the total depth of the well, not the static water level. If your well refills as fast as the static water level, then size it for that plus another 20 or 30 feet for variation. But if your well can't keep up with your pump, then you'll want to plan on drawing your static water level down, which means the pump is going to be fighting more gravity. Either way, the wrong sizing kills your system's efficiency and often its reliability. And if you want to see how real off-grid water systems are built, then you need to check out the Exodus series. It's a free one-week video journey across seven real homesteads packed with practical insights and real life setups. Sign up now at thereadylife.com forward slash exodus for free and we'll see you there.